Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Spiffing Brit, and today you join me in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. That's right, this is the game that came before Skyrim that everyone claims to have played, and realistically, not too many of you did. And I'm going to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, I've never played Oblivion. The main reason being that I've loaded it up a few times, and it has around about the same stability as Jenga during an earthquake. It's a Bethesda game, and so naturally it's rammed full of glitches, game breaks, and exploits, which are all waiting to be touched by myself and exploited for your entertainment, and naturally fueled by the wonderful thing that is tea. Mmm. Oh, that's some good tea today. God bless Yorkshire tea. The greatest tea in the land. However, alternative teas are acceptable as long as it's not coffee. So why are we playing Oblivion of all games? Well, I put it up in a poll and apparently you guys really wanted to see me break Oblivion. Now, even though I haven't even played this game all the way through, I've only lightly touched it, I do know an absolute ton of exploits. Mostly because anyone looking through the files of this game can go, hang on a second. If you were to give this person this item, you could completely and utterly break it. So in today's video, we're going to be doing fun things like making our character completely and utterly invisible to the naked eye and also generating an infinite amount of wealth because come on ladies and gentlemen you put me in a game and i've got to at least make a fair bit of money so without further ado let's start a brand new game and here we have it ladies and gentlemen the glorious character creator of uh, oblivion it's unique to say the least and you know what? we actually need to come up with a brilliant character so i think we should give our character a name and then we can start designing them but who do we want to actually go for oblivion the greatest hero known to man who isn't really that interested in the main storyline but is very interested interested in exploiting the game's mechanics. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be an old dude who, he's, you know, he's done his entire life, but he's decided, no, I'm actually a young person, I'm cool, I'm hip and happening, I know how to say yeet, and that means I should be the greatest adventurer. So for that reason, I'd like to welcome into the world the legendary adventurer, Seymour Clivage. Now, Seymour Clivage, he's just your average run-of-the-mill adventurer, however, I'm going to be controlling him, meaning he's going to be given incredible gifts and incredible powers when it comes to destroying some of the various mechanics of this game. But you know what, now that we have Seymour's name sorted, we need to make sure we sort out his actual race. So I think we should probably go for, he doesn't strike me as an orc, but he does strike me as a Nord. Yes, this does indeed look like someone who would be called Seymour. So we're going to be a Nord, and now we need to sort out everything else in our character. You know, before we actually mess with the face, I'd like to sort out the hair. We're going to make Seymour a incredibly long haired but bold character with grey hair. Also it gives us a nice little egg shape to work with on the top. Now we need to start altering Seymour's face. So to begin with the shapes. Oh no. Oh well you can make him chunky. You can make him very chunky. This is an incredible Seymour. Oh yes we're gonna make a very round. Oh he's very round. <laughs> What a character. Okay, so that's the face structure done. Now we just need to sort out the brow. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, the brow is so down. He looks permanently angry at all the young people doing their magic and stuff. Whereas poor Seymour, he's been too busy, I don't know, being an accountant his entire life. He's never had time to whip out a sword and go save the world. Now, the chin slider is something that uh, I guess they really put a lot of work into. Because you can take a chin from being normal size to being... Further out than an entire nose. I mean, you could genuinely take out someone's face with that. You know what, maybe we can have Seymour use his chin as a weapon. Like, down here it would be defensive, but out here he could probably stab someone using his chin. And look, he's so happy and smiley. He doesn't look like he'd do it, but trust me, he would. Now for the eyes. Well, we probably want the eyes to just be super concealed away beneath the eyebrows. Oh my god, hang on a second. What happens when he blinks? Oh, that is disgusting. Okay, thank you, Todd Howard. Oh my god, his eyes are tiny. In fact, his eyes aren't even facing forward. His eyes are facing in the direction of his nose. Seymour Clavage, he can't even really look forwards anymore. Oh, well, he's a perfect character. Oh, and forehead. Oh, we need the largest forehead. Yes, we want his eyebrows to just dip down so it covers up his eyes so he can't really even see. Oh, yes, and just absorb those eyeballs into the forehead. Perfect. Oh, and bring it forward. <laughs> 
You know, Seymour Clavage, he's a practical guy. He knows that he doesn't want to wear sunglasses outside, so instead he has his forehead bend over the front of his eyes to shield them from the deadly UV rays. Let us give him some nice little happy smiley lips. Oh, look at him, he's so happy. Oh, and we'll inflate those lips and make them extra large and mega puckered. Wow, okay, this is something unique. Yeah, this is a um unique character, say the least. I love Seymour, he's, uh, he's different. He really is. Oh, God. Oh, God, we're only just getting started. You can change the skin. Okay, right, we're changing the skin. Wait, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. What is this? What is this slider? What? <laughs> Oblivion, when did you have this? This is an absolute monster creator. Oh, we're going to give him a nice little pink nose. Oh, that's going to make him so happy. Yes, this is lovely. What is going on here? We're changing the colours of everything. Okay, that's fine. I'm just not going to question that. That's that's great. And then eyebrows. Oh, yes. We want his eyebrows to be very pronounced. Very pronounced dark eyebrows. Very thick. Very dark. Oh, no. That is perfect. I want to give him some nice luscious red lips. Oh, perfect. Oh, absolutely perfect. Super dark, perfect lips. Oh, Seymour, you are a very handsome devil. All right, and you know what? With this, Seymour Clavage is completely and utterly complete. He's old, but you know what? He's young in heart, and he's young in his lips. Oh my god, hang a second. I did not see this slider. What is this complexion slider? Oh, we can add even more wrinkles. Although, realistically, I want this down to the lowest, because then the eyes are absorbed even further. Oh, no, that's just perfect. That is perfect. And away we go, ladies and gentlemen. Are you sure you want to be an Ord? Yes, I'm sure I want to be this ridiculous monster person. Right. And so the adventure of Seymour Clavage begins. Oh, it's going to be glorious. Look at him. He's just so happy. He's just so happy. He's in a little jail cell, so he doesn't really know what to do. But he is happy. Anyway, let us start this game by going up to the door. Oh, look. We've got some guards and a lovely little king. So, yes, this is the Emperor of Tamriel. And lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, if you've ever played this game before... He's gonna die, yeah. I mean, he's apparently a very famous actor, I can't remember who it is if I'm honest. And uh, yeah, they paid a ridiculous amount of money to have him in this game, only to kill him off in the opening act. But the logic of this game is that this lovely man here is currently getting chased by a ton of assassins, and we are going to effectively try and help him escape. My god, his eyes are so big. If only Seymour could have eyes this big. Now honestly, if you were Emperor Aureol Septim, this lovely character here, you might be surprised to discover that your chosen one hero looks older than you. I mean, this bloke is meant to be 80, but Seymour Clavage is probably somewhere around the region of 127. Oh my god, hang on my character is massive in comparison to all of them. Jesus Christ! What the- I, I'm huge! Right, you know what, I'm going to follow the Emperor, and uh, yes, everyone around me is going to die, but it's okay, guys, because as long as good old Seymour Clavage survives and gets out into the real world, it's all good. So it's time I enjoy Tutorial Island, effectively. Oh, and apparently the Emperor's under attack. You know what, I'm going to help out, I'm going to use my Fists of Fury. Come on, Seymour. Fists of Fury! Perfect. Right, we've finally reached the stage where we get to kind of pick our class, or I'm not really sure what this is, I think this is our Astrology sign. Now, these have some wonderful power-ups, so for example, the Apprentice, you uh, gain the ability to get an extra 100 points of Magicka, but it increases your weakness to magic damage. Uh, things like, I guess, the Thief, which grants an extra 10 point bonus to agility, speed and luck attributes, which is quite useful. However, alternatively, the one we would like is this one right here, the Lover. This allows you to use the Lover's Kiss power once a day to paralyze an opponent for 10 seconds at the cost of 120 points of my fatigue. Now, this is absolutely incredible. This is the perfect star sign, and the reason why is when someone is paralyzed, you can steal from them and there is nothing they can do. Anyway, we're going to be born under the sign of the lover. Let's go. Right, now, this is the moment where the Emperor is going to die. His two guards run out there and do a little bit of the fighting. Meanwhile, some bloke is going to come through that door behind us. Meanwhile, the Emperor is going to give me a little amulet of kings, which makes us super magical. Anyway, Emperor's gonna die. It's so nice of me just to stand there and do nothing. That was phenomenal. What a shame. Anyway, Boris is now a bit sad because he failed to protect the Emperor. Anyway, I'm just gonna skip through all this dialogue. Thanks you for all the lore, but I'm afraid I don't need it, because now I get to choose my class. 
class. Perfect. Now, there's some classes which are better than others. If you have a class which gives you a major skill, then in the skill section you'll get some extra points to buff it. However, realistically, I think a custom class is probably what we're looking for. It could be a combat focused one, a magic focused one, or a stealth focused one. For what I'm going for, it's going to be stealth. And the two favourite attributes are going to be agility and speed. And then we get to pick seven major skills which are going to increase our stats. So, for example, we could pick acrobatics, meaning that we can jump longer distances and avoid damage when falling. Yeah, you can see how this one could probably be cheesed. We're also going to grab alchemy, and then we want sneak, security, mysticism, illusion, and I guess we could take hand to hand for the fun of it. You know, we'll go for athletics. There we go, we've made the perfect class for us. And what should we name it? Well, we're going to name it the Clavage class. Oh, we can't name it that. Very well, we'll just call it Clavage. Job done. Are you sure you want to be a Clavage? I'm sure I'd love to be a Clavage. <laughs> now at this point we are literally being sent on our way to go and do our adventure and this is where we're going to basically be bombarded by a ton of quests. Yeah, uh, we get given literally a million quests, which I don't really want to do. <laughs> anyway, we've done our job, it's time we leave this lovely dungeon. And here we have it, I do believe this is the escape ladies and gentlemen, so I'll just pop down a save and we can finally escape. We've finished, it's time for us to exit the sewers and go into the wider world of 100% the game's crashed. Lovely, thank you game. Ah, oh, time to reload. Ah, oh, and finally after that one crash, we've made it into this glorious world only to be bombarded by even more quests. Thank you game. So here we have it. Seymour Clavage has escaped. He's a free man in this glorious world. Where does he want to go? Because come on, there's an adventure. There's a whole world of adventure awaiting. And also he's completely utterly lost slash has absolutely no idea where he is. It's a good thing we have a map, I do believe. So as we can see, we're over here by the Imperial city and we've just escaped. Now there are a few places I need to go. Firstly, I would like to immediately go all the way down here to this lovely town over here, Anvil. So we're going to fast travel all of the way to Anvil. Because you know it's oblivion, you don't have to actually go to a place to be able to fast travel there immediately and steal everything. Now I'm going to immediately then run on into this lovely place here, the Mage's Guild. Now Seymour Clavage, he's no mage, but what he can do is come up to this lovely lady here and I I'm, I can say I'd like to join the Mages Guild, and lo and behold, she'll let me in. So there we go, I've just been given a key to the Mages Guild. Perfect. And immediately I'm just going to run away. Thank you very much. Am I in the right place? Yes, yes I am. So I've come all the way up to the top floor of the Mages Guild, and I'm just going to steal effectively all of their lovely scrolls, because scrolls are super duper useful. So yes, we're just going to steal basically everything of value from the Mages Guild. Now bear in mind, we've literally just joined a guild, they have no idea who we are. Seymour just ran up to the front desk, wearing full armour and a sword equipped with his beautiful little strange face. And they were just like, you know what, sure, come on in, we don't need any credentials, why not have you? So we're just going to grab a jeweled necklace from them, thank you very much, uh, I'll, be I'll be borrowing that one. And then we need this potion over here. The potion of paralysis a very very important potion now that we have this potion because we have one of them we can effectively have infinite of them because yes this is one of those lovely games with item duplication glitches and now we need to go and see if we can find someone to buy a few scrolls from so I love how technically this guild is no problem with me stealing all of their lovely cheap wine thank you very much little majors guild yes I'll be back I promise oh god I accidentally stole some stuff and I do believe I accidentally just got kicked out of the majors guild yes uh, I I accidentally stole something that I wasn't meant to steal. Apparently all of the other things that I stole were fine, but that tiny little soul gem, no, that took it too far, and so they decided to kick me out of the Major's Guild, and I'm now up here? Where am I? Where the heck is this? Fost Crag Spire, okay. So I guess we're never going to return to Anvil after that, but hey, you know, these things happen. And instead we're going to be going to the lovely Imperial City Plaza. Now there is one very important person who we need to locate. Now there's all of these lovely people running around here, but realistically we don't want any of them. We want to go into this wooden door here. Now this gets us into Dorian's house. Now Dorian is a very, very special NPC. Because unlike most NPCs, he is marked as a valuable NPC. PC and that there's something is in his inventory later in the game that needs to always be in his inventory. This creates a bit of an issue because it means if you take items from his inventory, they kind of just immediately regenerate, which as you can probably guess could be cause for concern.
turn. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and talk to him. And what we want to do is we want to basically bribe him. Now, the reason why we want to bribe him is because the money we bribe him with goes straight into his inventory. So we've given him a fair bit of our gold. How are we going to get our gold back exactly? Well, very important question, ladies and gentlemen. Hang on a second. I also just realized Seymour Clavage is a beautiful little gremlin. But what is going on back there? What is Dorian doing? Why is he smiling at me? Seymour, turn around. Face him. Go away, Dorian. There's important things at work, which you totally shouldn't question. Here it is. Lover's Kiss. Now, if we cast Lover's Kiss on him, we paralyze him. So if we were to crouch now, we could attempt to steal from him. But uh, let's be honest, he's probably going to notice that. So instead, what we can do is we cast Lover's Kiss on him. Lo and behold, he now is paralyzed and uh, we can loot him. Now, he has this lovely amount of gold on him, as you can see, 75 gold. So First we're going to take the key to his house and then we're just going to uh, take some of the gold basically and uh, as you can see quite interestingly we took some of the gold so we took about 15 gold now he's down to 66 gold and we keep clicking it and as you see the number in the bottom left keeps going up but the gold in his inventory doesn't. Now realistically you could tap as much as you like but alternatively if you're me then you've got an auto clicker so uh, you just hold down your mouse and uh, lo and behold you get rich, ladies and gentlemen. You're getting rich. So this is how Seymour Clavage makes all of his money. Because um, everyone else gets money from other means. I don't know. They run around. They stab people. They do adventures. They go on tons of quests. Alternatively, Seymour Clavage, he goes up to Dorian, gives him a big kiss, paralyzes him with ecstasy or something. I don't know. And then proceeds to steal a ton of gold from his pockets. Oh, it's glorious. So yes, we're coming up to 31,000 gold. I'd like to point out that this game has been out for oh goodness I think it's about 13 years now and they've patched it multiple times but this has still never been fixed I have no idea why so I'm just going to hold my mouse down and I'll get back to you once we have a fair bit of money oh there we have it ladies and gentlemen I've just used my auto clicker and lo and behold we now have 1 million gold ah Perfectly balanced as all things should be. Job done. We've taken one million gold away from him. So we'll just exit and uh, away we go. Thank you. It was an absolute pleasure to meet you, friend. Um, and I'll be taking your gold now. Well, I suppose I could take the planters whilst I'm here. Or even all of the sacks. Actually, how's he doing? Oh, he wants a, he wants a fight. No, 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 no. We can be friends. We can be friends. Oh, God. He really wants a fight. What's up with you, Dory? Just because I took one million gold from you doesn't mean you need to punch me with your fists. Wow, you are really aggressive. Good lord. Don't make me paralyze you. Okay, I've had to paralyze him again. And lo and behold, if you want to take more gold, you just can. Oh, God. The Imperial Watch has come. He's apparently going to confiscate stuff and put me in jail. Now, the bounty, I think I just saw it there, was 778 gold. So I'll just uh, pay that gold. Lovely stuff. So there we go. I think I've paid my bounty and I now get put in prison. Good stuff. Uh, well, I'm actually just out of prison. Oh, God, don't stab him. So I've managed to get in and out of prison and I still have 1 million gold to my name because apparently robbing that lovely person for everything he had only put a bounty of 700 gold on me. So yes, profitable robbing from Seymour Clavage. Anyway, Seymour, he needs to go and locate something magical. The most important thing we need to go and locate is, of course, uh, we need a few gemstones and we're going to want a few scrolls because I'd like to do a bit of item exploitation to say the least. So let us try and leave the prison section. Now, one thing I want to do is buy all of these scrolls, basically, because um, what we need is we need a multiple of the same scrolls. Now, we have infinite gold, so we might as well just buy as many scrolls as we like. Ah, now, this is exactly what I was looking for. This lovely salesman here has 16 scrolls of Absorb Minor Magicka. This is exactly what we want. We want to buy all 16 of them for 400 gold. Now, there's a reason why. This is going to become... <sighs> moderately broken to say the least. The aim of what I'd like my character to do at the moment is to basically construct a full set of armor which is able to have 100% chameleon on it. 100% chameleon means no one can physically see you. If you are to stab someone, they can't tell where you are and just go, oh, I appear to have a gaping hole in my arm. Where did that come from? You know, whilst we're here, we could buy the hands of the Atronac for 12,000 gold. Now that's a lot of gold, but you know, come on, we got millions, so uh, why not? We'll buy that. 
and there's going to be a reason why. I think we can do something magical with this scroll. Anyway, there we go. So we have success. We have a large amount of scrolls and an item that I would like to duplicate. So how do we start? Well, it's quite simple. Oh my god, is that an Argonian? Oh my god. Oh, they look so silly. What is up with their body? Although, to be fair, I say they look silly. I mean, we do also have this lovely gremlin here to compare. Anyway, it's perfect in my opinion. So how are we going to duplicate items? Well, it's actually relatively simple. So to start off with, you want to get the stack of scrolls that you have. So our lovely Absorb Minor Magical Scrolls. And we want to click on them and have them selected. So there we go. And then we want to go over to the item that we want to duplicate. Like, for example, let's go for the Hands of Atronach. And we want to do a shift and click to drop them on the ground. And if we untab, suddenly we have... All of these so we can grab all of them and uh, lo and behold oh we are now over encumbered because we have seven hands of the atronach <laughs> <laughs> don't think we meant to have that many so yeah we'll drop her uh, two of them and you know what? we'll just uh we'll leave them on the floor everyone else can you know enjoy some of these overpowered gauntlets jesus christ look at them they are pretty meaty hand stuffs okay right so there are a few ways we can get this 100 percent chameleon set of armor we need to get a very special stone which we can then attach to all of our sets of armor to grant us 100 percent chameleon so for that we're going to want to go to the outer world come over here to the imperial prison sewer and we want to run off roughly in that direction over there so off on our adventure we go what i don't quite understand is how our character is able to jump in water i don't know about you but i've never managed to jump without actually touching the ground oh well the game's unique and funky oh no is, is that a bandit i do believe someone's found us oh goodness oh god he he clunked me oh and he's very good at blocking this man all right okay if that's the case i'm going to have to start to use magic to defeat these people so what magic do i have Ah, oh, maybe we probably should have duplicated a flash bolt. Yes, okay, so we'll select Absorb Minor Magicka, and then we're going to drop a flash bolt on the ground, and then we're going to grab all of the flash bolts, and then we're going to equip the flash bolt, and now we're just going to cast flash bolt permanently. Yeah, this is going to hopefully allow us to kill just about everything in the game. Excuse me, did you just hit me? That was very cheeky of you. Flash bolt, away! <laughs> oh god, it's too effective. <laughs> Oh, this game is very special. So yes, we are now on our adventure with the legendary Seymour Clavage, and we're going to be running off in this direction to go collect our lovely chameleon set of armour. Also, if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far in this wonderful game Oblivion, hey, feel free to give the video a like, because you know, it's going to make Seymour happy. Yes, Seymour, are you happy? Yes, I like it when the kids enjoy videos. Yes, what is this YouTube thing? Is it like MySpace? Yes. Oh, Seymour, very similar to MySpace. Oh, God, and there we have it. We've located it. Our first paintbrush. Now, why is a paintbrush so overpowered? Well, you see, paintbrushes are unique little creatures. So let's take this bridge here, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the paintbrush by, of course, selecting our Absorb Minor Magic, scrolling down to where we have our paintbrush, and dropping our paintbrush. Oh wait, they've all decided to levitate. Isn't that interesting, ladies and gentlemen? Why have all of the paintbrushes decided to set themselves and levitate right here? Well, it's because paintbrushes are unique in that uh, they're very broken. So we want to drop one paintbrush and the paintbrush itself decides to just levitate where it is. Let's drop one paintbrush right here in front of us. And then maybe we drop one paintbrush just a bit lower. Okay, so we drop one paintbrush just about here and the paintbrush levitates in place and then we can drop another paintbrush right about here and we'll bounce so that's one paintbrush here here and here and you'll notice yes you can stand on the paintbrushes now <laughs> Something you might be thinking is, well, this seems a little bit broken because uh, we can just put another paintbrush over there. So there's another paintbrush there to stand on. And I don't know, we can put one right about here. And so, yeah, we jump from paintbrush to paintbrush. So there we go. We stand on top of these paintbrushes and we can just keep climbing through the skies on our magical paintbrushes. Oh, yeah, this game is um quite unique. All right, so I need to try and locate a gate to oblivion. Now, a gate to oblivion allows us to get into this evil dark world and hopefully uh, find a tower. And then there's this tower which gives us a percentage chance of giving us a chameleon thing which we can strap onto the side of our armor. So yeah, I just need to try and locate the nearest entry point into a gate. What about are you? Here it is, Kvatch. So yes, we're just going to fast travel all the way over to Kvatch, lob our way through the oblivion gate, 
climb up the towers and hopefully break the game in order to get our 100% chameleon. All of these lovely things. Oh my god, why is the sky going funky? The sky appears to be going very funky. Ah, here we go. Yes, there are goblins coming out of the gates. Now we can just dodge all of their spells using our incredible acrobatics. And we just want to throw ourselves through this gate into oblivion. So there we go. We're throwing ourselves into oblivion. Here we are. We're in oblivion. And now we need to climb a tower. Now... If I had to hazard a guess, I would say that tower over there is the tower we need to get. Oh my goodness. Goblins, go away. Right, now we need to make our way up what appears to be the Mount Doom Tower. Another flash bolt. Flash bolt? Yes. Your flash bolts don't work on me. Mine are superior. Okay, and we go into the tower. Lovely. Now at the top of this tower, there is going to be a very special thing. But to get up there, we're going to need to flash bolt our way to success. And another one over there. Flash bolt. Perfect. Flash bolt, flash bolt, flash bolt. Perfect. Flashbolt! What did we just kill? The Demora Churl. That seems like a actual important thing, but hey, he died in one hit, that's fine by me. Oh no, there's a thing here. Flashbolt! There's another thing over there. So, Flashbolt- oh my god, that guy looks like Darth Maul. Right, Flashbolt! Perfect. <laughs> Flawless. <laughs> Oh, this is balanced. Right, let's also take all of their scrolls. Oh, don't mind me. I'll borrow those. Now, where does this go? Door to the Plain of Oblivion. Okay. It looks like I'm going to need to go into the Plain of Oblivion. Oh my god, right. I'm going to need to go into this tower, I guess, to get a key, won't I? Oh, there's someone. There we go. He's dead. Oh, he's got a key. Nice. I'll take that. Lovely stuff. And now I've got the key to the keep. I'm going to run in there. Steal the sigil stone from this keep and then job done. Uh, we should be able to get the stone and hopefully the stone is going to be the chameleon stone. And then job done. We've won. We've basically broken the game. So there we go. We're going to open this. Door opens with the sigil key. I know. Lovely stuff. And then we get to climb all the way up a lovely evil staircase. Oh goodness, this looks very intense. Right, and up we come. A very poorly constructed staircase right here. Oh, and a couple of... Crap goblins. Nice. Right, let's flashbolt them. Flashbolt. And flashbolt. And flashbolt. Flawless. We've nailed it. Right, now we just need to run on up these stairs. Honestly, why is anyone having problems dealing with all of the enemies of Oblivion? Just mass produce the flashbolt scrolls and job done. You've won. Game's yours. So now when we grab this thing, we get a special stone. Now there's a percentage chance that it will have various modifiers like chameleon or maybe just better light armor or whatever so we want to make sure we get the one that we want and so for that we drop down a lovely save point what we need to do is come up to this lovely little podium here and grab the sigil stone now whatever sigil stone you get depends on the situation so we were given the Ascendant Sigil Stone. Now if we check it, we were given Turn Undead up to level 7 for 20 seconds on strike. Not gonna lie, that's not the best. So we're just gonna reload, you know? We're just gonna reload that. And uh, we're gonna grab another Sigil Stone. <laughs> because I don't want to be able to turn undead. No, 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 no. I want a different Sigil Stone. And what do we get? We get Demoralize up to level 2 for 20 seconds. Nope. No, oh, that's not going to cut it either. Got to reload again. Come on, give me a new sigil stone. Make it jazzy. It's a subjacent sigil stone which grants silence for 7 seconds upon each strike and also chameleon plus 15% on the self. Now, it's not quite 100% chameleon. So how are we going to do that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, don't worry. We'll get to that. First, we just need to watch the entirety of Oblivion burn down. Anyways, there we go. Oblivion's burnt down. That's one portal sorted. Lovely stuff. The city is saved. Oh, God. God, you guys look angry. Right, I'll have to kill you. Go away. There we go. I've managed to save the city and destroy the Oblivion Gate. There we go. So apparently we need to break the siege and join our lovely captain here and retake the city. But just before we do that, I'm going to uh, do a little cheeky duplication glitch. And lo and behold, one sigil stone of chameleon suddenly becomes 16. So we want to grab quite a few of them because, you know, these are completely overpowered things. So we go, how many of these sigil stones have we got? 10. Now, we're going to start applying some of these sigil stones. We'll add it to our rough leather shield. That's going to give us plus 15% chameleon. And we must first give it a name. Right, okay. What would be a good name for a shield that you can hide behind that most people won't see? It's the Big Chunga Shield, of course. Because everyone would be too busy looking at Big Chungas to actually see the shield. Now we want to add it to our, let's say, Rusty Iron Greaves. And also apply it to our Jeweled Necklace and call it Jazz. And then our Rough Leather Boots. 
We're gonna call these bad boys camo boots because I mean, come on, as soon as you wear camouflage, you physically can't even be seen. And there we go, job done. Now if we try to wear some of these items, our camo boots, our jazz and our big chungus, we can see that we have plus 15% chameleon from this, plus 15% so we're up to 30, and then we have another 15% here, so we're up to 45%, and then add another 15 here, so we're up to 65%. We need to make it even better. And for that I'm afraid we're going to need to get rid of our gauntlets and our armor. In fact, we just need more clothes, basically. More clothes are needed, sire. So, uh, right, so uh, let's join the assault, I guess. Break the siege, and hopefully a few soldiers will die, and we can steal their armor and convert it into something jazzy. So here we go. We find ourselves in the city, and there's a bit of a fight going on here. Now, uh, we could help out with the fight. Alternatively... We could just, you know, eat ourselves around and have some fun. More flashbolts, ladies and gentlemen. Flashbolt! Can I actually even be seen? Oh no, at first I can't. But as soon as I start attacking, then I can be seen. Our friendly archer did just accidentally shoot an arrow into my head because they were trying to hit that <laughs> goblin over there. Right, I'll have to forgive them for that. Oh, what's happening here? Who are you? Oh, you're a hidden little goblin. Little guy. <gasps> You've got a base ring of shadows, which has an extra 20% chameleon on it. Um, thank you, I'll be borrowing that bad boy. He's just given me an extra 20% chameleon on an item, so we can equip that. Wabam. Very nice. 20% extra chameleon. So there we go, our chameleon skill is so good now, as you can see, our character has become invisible. Whilst we can see him here in this menu, and we can see the arrow going straight through him, if you look in the real world, he is no longer visible. You can see kind of like a faint outline where he should be, but yeah, he is completely and utterly hidden. And now we're going to join the humans on their adventure and hopefully pull all of these people out of the chapel who are stuck in there. Right, let's go into this church. Oh my god, clogs. Oh my god, we've just discovered clogs. <sighs> oh, so yeah, we've got our camo boots, but I mean, come on. What about just some wearing clogs? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Yeah, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna equip his clogs out with some incredible stats. So, let's go find our stone and apply a legendary stone to clogs. <laughs> These are going to become magic clogs. Oh, goodness. Oh, we've also got a flax tunic. Perfect, this is what we need as well. Because as great as Aegis of the Apocalypse is, a ridiculously fantastic set of heavy armor, it's probably better we wear the flax tunic, due to the fact that it's not as big, and we can also put chameleon on it. Bam, the Adidas camo range is now equipped. But just how much chameleon do we have? Well, of course, we have the Adidas camo, so that's 15 chameleon. Then down here, we have the base ring of shadows, which we got very luckily, so that's an extra 20, so we're up to 30 chameleon, actually sorry, 35 chameleon. Then we add the big chungus, so that's an extra 15 chameleon, bring us up to 50, and then we have jazz, which adds an extra 15, which takes us up to 65, then the magic clogs for another 15, that takes us up to 80, and then finally yeet, with an extra 15, meaning our chameleon skill is now up to 95. But how do we get it even better? Well, we need to change out of these hands of the Atronach and change to something with our lovely chameleon skill. But until we find it, it's not possible. So we need to find a pair of gloves somewhere, basically. Oh, and Beric Inham has died. So I now need to grab that key from him. There we go, perfect. Oh, and also those iron gauntlets. I'll be taking those because uh, my gauntlet, of course, it's good, but it has its issues because it hasn't got the wonderful chameleon on it. So I'm going to unequip my gauntlet and we're going to add chameleon to the iron gauntlets. So we come on down here, find our little stone, add the item iron gauntlets and we're going to add 100% chameleon. Lovely stuff. And create. And now we just equip. There we go. We have finally done it, ladies and gentlemen. Our character will now have technically managed to reach, with an extra 15 chameleon, 110 chameleon skill. He is invisible for all. There's not even a faint outline anymore. All right, now all we have to do is fight all of these monsters in the courtyard. That should be fine. Once that's done, job done. I've done my best and I've saved the world, effectively. Although I've managed to do so without anyone actually seeing me save the world. I guess that's kind of what Seymour Clavage is about. He saves the world without ever being known as a hero. Mostly because you physically can't even see him. The thing is, like, this AI knows he's getting attacked, he just doesn't know where from. And he physically can't come to terms with it. He's very disappointed by it all. Where did that magic come from? Why is someone hitting me? Why can't I see the person hitting me? Oh god, I made our way inside, but uh, there's some wacky things going on in here, to say the least. But I'm going to need to start using some lovely 
Flash bolts. Lovely stuff. Right. And flash bolt. And flash bolt. Perfect. What is this? Flame Atronach. Okay, I guess I attack that. I mean, this is quite a high level monster to be fair, but uh, don't mind me. I'll just wail on it from behind. I can't even notice. There we go. And that's dead. That was quite easy. Oh my god, there's so many beasties around here. How am I meant to fight them? Well, I'll tell you how. You just stand behind them. Oh wait, we can sneak attack for six times extra damage. That seems balanced, because of course I guess we can just hide behind people, crouch, and sneak attack. And this counts as a sneak attack. Yeah, see, we've got this lovely person. Sneak attack. Sneak attack. Sneak attack. Sneak attack. <laughs> I'm using a default weapon, but I'm able to do incredible amounts of damage here. And through into the Count's quarters. Count, are you alive, Count? Oh no, I do believe you are very much dead, judging by that body over there. Yep, Count be dead. Ah. <sighs> Alright, let's deliver his signet. Convean ring signet. There we go. I'll steal that. Lovely stuff. Oh no, sorry, I mean deliver, not steal. But there we go. We've managed to do our entire quest here, so uh, how about we teleport our way back into the capital and I can show you how to have a fair bit of fun. Right, now who's this person here? We've got Samuel Bellyton. Now, um, theoretically, he technically can't actually see me, so... If I take this dagger and just crouch down and uh, just basically start wailing on him, he can't tell where this is coming from. He has genuinely no idea. He hasn't called for guards. All he knows is he's getting attacked from somewhere. And there we go, he's dead. And the guards don't know why he's dead. Oh, who's this? Is this a guard? Yes, a palace guard. Oh no, palace guard. Someone's attacking you. Where's it coming from? Nobody knows, but you should run in that direction to get away from him. <laughs> oh, these palace guards. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have a 100% chameleon character who genuinely can't be stopped. The incredible sneak attack damage that he's doing. I mean, he's just killed a palace guard right there. What are you meant to do to stop something like that? That's just a tad overpowered. Okay, and now I think we pull out our bow. Yes. Yes. I think we're, we're almost getting him. Not quite. I was There was a bit of attack there. I think we damage him a fair bit. <laughs> it's quite difficult uh, doing archery, I must say. Maybe if I d did like practice archery, I'd be good at it. Ah, oh, there we go, he's dead. And can we get the guard as well, please? Come on, guard. Yes, stand still, guard. There we go, lovely stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've had an absolutely lovely time playing the game today. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, then make sure to give the video a like. It really does mean a lot to me. And, of course, it means a lot to good old Seymour Clavage. You'd make his little day. He'd be so happy. Very happy. Look at him. Look at him. He's shaking his head. Yes, you like the video. Yes. There you go. So you can do that. That would make his day. And in addition to that, if you want to see me break the game Skyrim using very similar, very cheesy exploits, then make sure to go down into the comment section and and vote using the wonderful term yay for if you want a Skyrim video and nay if you want something else and you have something to recommend. That's right, it's all up to you in the community. Although, I guess if I really let the community have its way, we'd have back-to-back 24-hour -back TEA ASMR live streams. But nonetheless, thank you very much for watching today, ladies and gentlemen. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you here. If you enjoyed what you've seen and you want to see more, then make sure to subscribe. It would be absolutely wonderful to have you in the community. That's right, that's the name of the group here. We want you in it. You'd be perfect. And as always, a massive thank you to my majestic patrons who make all of these lovely videos possible. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do any of these silly things. So thank you very much, you majestic sausages. And I'll see all of you in the next one. And if you want a video to watch next, well, bam, this one on screen now, you're going to love it. Anyway, farewell. Have a lovely time. Now play me out with some sweet jazz music or something like that. Hmm, yes, jazz good bit of jazz. I mean, I can't hear it, but I'm, I'm imagining it's very good.